Organic Ingenious Supplies. And we are back. This week we're playing a rematch of the last spell table game that we played. Starting the game is Alex playing Kinnon. This deck, nicknamed Big Flips, comes to us from higher from playing with power. It's a mid-rangey deck that's just packed with beaters. It focuses on getting a ton of mana on the board and activating Kinnon to cheat these into play. From there, it just snowballs. Jim is playing Toxrel, coming to us from Cyrus from Mental Misplay. This is a blue-black control deck that uses Toxrel to keep creatures off the board. And it is absolutely oppressive. Elliot is playing Gitrog Dakmore Salvage. This deck focuses on dredge combo and can draw through the deck at the drop of a hat. If you want to know how this combo works, check out this link in the show notes. We've got a video that goes through all of it. And finally, Aaron is playing Thrasios Dargo. This is a Temer Sacrifice list that focuses on cost reducing Dargo until it only costs one, then casting it repeatedly and sacrificing it to a free sack outlet. Let's get into it. In this game, two players had pregame effects. Elliot starts by putting a gemstone cavern into play, exiling City of Brass. Aaron puts his own gemstone caverns into play, exiling Polluted Delta. Then Alex kicks off turn one. He draws a card, plays a breeding pool untapped, taking two, going to 38. Then he casts Chrome Mox, exiling Coma. He uses this two mana to cast Kinnon, and when it resolves, he passes. Jim draws a card, plays a Murkwater Pathway, and casts a Mana Vault, then passes the turn. Elliot draws a card, plays a Mana Confluence, and casts a Mana Crypt. He then casts a Mana Vault, and Jim responds by paying two life to cast Mental Misstep. This counters the Mana Vault. Elliot casts Life from the Loam with no targets, taking one off the Mana Confluence, then follows it up with a Vindhorn Elves, which resolves, and he passes to Aaron. Aaron draws a card, plays a Command Tower, and casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Thrasios, and when that resolves, he passes to Alex. Alex kicks off turn two by untapping and drawing a card. He plays Exotic Orchard as his land for turn, then moves to combat. He swings Cannon at Jim. There's no blocks, so Jim takes two, going to 36. Then Alex passes. Jim untaps and draws a card. He plays a Polluted Delta as his land for turn, then passes. Elliot untaps, and in his upkeep, he flips for Mana Crypt and takes no damage. Before moving to his draw step, Alex casts Force of Vigor, targeting Elliot's Mana Crypt and Aaron's Mana Crypt, destroying both of them. Elliot draws for turn, and with a mostly empty hand, he's got not much to do, so he passes to Aaron. Aaron untaps, draws a card for turn, and casts Phantasmal Image. It resolves and enters as Kinnon. He casts a Chrome Mox, exiling Force of Will, then moves to combat. He swings Thrasios at Alex, and there's no blocks, so Alex takes one, going to 37. In his post-combat main, he casts Grim Monolith, then passes to Alex. On turn three, Alex untaps and draws a card. He plays an island and casts a Bloom Tender. He moves to combat, swinging Kinnon at Jim. There's no blocks, and Jim takes two, going to 34, then Alex passes. Jim untaps, draws a card, and plays a Sunken Ruins. Jim moves to his end step, and Elliot casts Vampiric Tutor. Jim responds by cracking Polluted Delta, going to 33, grabbing an Underground Sea. Still in response to the Vampiric Tutor, Jim flashes in Opposition Agent. It resolves, and with the Vampiric Tutor still on the stack, Elliot casts Assassin's Trophy targeting Opposition Agent, taking one off the Mana Confluence. Assassin's Trophy resolves, and Jim gets a basic island into play. Then the Vampiric Tutor resolves, and Elliot takes two, going to 36, and searches up a card to put on top of his library. Jim continues to pass the turn. Elliot untaps, draws a card, and plays a Crystal Vein as his land for turn. He sacks it to add two colorless, then casts Gitrog, taking one off the Mana Confluence. Gitrog resolves, and he passes. Aaron untaps and draws a card. He casts Jeska's Will, targeting Jim, which resolves. Jim has four cards in hand, so Aaron makes four red. He exiles the top three cards of his library, which are Underworld Breach, Taiga, and Mindbreak Trap. He plays the Taiga, then casts the Underworld Breach, and it resolves. He casts Birds of Paradise. He floats four colorless off of Grim Monolith, and cast Dargo, sacrificing Birds of Paradise, Chrome Mox, and Grim Monolith. At this point, he's got a red and four colorless floating. He casts Jeska's Will from his graveyard, targeting Jim. He makes four more red, and exiles Force of Negation, Finale of Devastation, and Bloom Tender off the top of his library. He casts the Bloom Tender, then activates Thrasios, scrying one to the top, 
and reveals Arid Mesa, but he puts it into play tapped. He moves to combat, swinging Thrasios at Jim. There's no blocks, so Jim goes to 32, then Aaron passes. Alex untaps and draws a card. He plays Gemstone Caverns, then passes to Jim. Jim untaps, draws a card, and casts Tox Roll. It resolves. Jim tries to move to his end step, but at the end of his pre-combat main phase, Alex overloads Cyclonic Rift. It resolves, and Jim passes. Elliot untaps, and elects to dredge life from the loam. Elliot mills Misty Rainforest, Deathrite Shaman, and Peer into the Abyss. He casts Life from the Loam, targeting Misty Rainforest and Crystal Vein, taking one damage off Mana Confluence. He plays a Misty Rainforest, cracking it going to 33, and grabs a Bayou. He casts Finhorn Elves, and when that resolves, he passes. Aaron untaps and draws a card. He cracks the Arid Mesa going to 39, grabbing Volcanic Island. He casts Thrasios, then follows it up with a Bloom Tender, and passes. On turn 5, Alex untaps and draws a card. He casts Seedborn Muse. When it resolves, he passes. Jim untaps and draws a card, then recasts his Mana Vault. He casts Dark Ritual. Alex responds by casting Force of Negation, pitching Consecrated Sphinx. Jim responds to that by casting Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting Force of Negation. The Flusterstorm counters Force of Negation, and Dark Ritual resolves adding 3 black. Jim casts Toxroll. He tries to move to the end step, and again at the end of Jim's post-combat main phase, Alex has action. This time he activates Kinnon, looks at the top 5, and puts Kogla into play. It enters the battlefield and fights Toxroll. They both go to the graveyard, and Jim continues passing the turn. Elliot untaps, and dredges life from the loam. This time he mills Dark Ritual, Squandered Resources, and Oblivion Crown. He plays Crystal Vein as his land for turn, then casts the Gitrog monster. It resolves, and when Elliot moves to his end step, Alex activates Kinnon. He looks at the top five and puts Void Winnower into play. Then Elliot continues passing. Aaron untaps and draws a card. He's got nothing to do, but in his end step, Alex activates Kinnon again, this time putting Gilded Drake into play. When it enters the battlefield, he swaps it with Aaron's Bloom Tender, to which Aaron responds by activating Bloom Tender and activating Thrasios. He scries one to the bottom, reveals Flusterstorm and draws it, then passes. Alex untaps and draws a card. He plays a forest, then moves to combat, swinging Void Winnower at Elliot. There's no blocks, so Elliot takes 11, going to 21. He activates Kinnon, but this time it's a whiff, so he passes to Jim. Jim untaps, taking one off the Mana Vault. He draws a card and casts Imperial Seal. It resolves, so he takes another two and searches up one card to put it on top of his library. He moves to his end step. Alex activates Kinnon and puts Manglehorn into play. When it enters the battlefield, it's only got one target, so he pops Jim's Mana Vault. Then Jim continues passing. Elliot untaps, and in his upkeep, he's got a Gitrog trigger. He floats a green and takes one off his Mana Confluence. The trigger resolves, and he sacks that Mana Confluence to draw a card. Then moves to his draw step and draws for turn. He sacrifices Crystal Vein for two colorless, which triggers the Gitrog and draws him a card. He plays Nurturing Peatland, then activates it, drawing another card off Gitrog, then drawing a card off the Peatland. He plays Prismatic Vista as his second land for turn, and sacrifices it, taking one. This triggers Gitrog again, and he draws a card. He resolves the Prismatic Vista activation to grab a snow-covered forest. He moves to his end step, and Alex activates Kinnon, putting Thrasios into play, then uses the rest of his mana to activate his new Thrasios, scrying one to the bottom, and putting Finhorn Elves into his hand, then passes. Aaron untaps and draws a card. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves through combat, and in his post-combat main, the Carpet of Flowers triggers targeting Jim. He adds two mana, and throws in two more to activate Thrasios, scrying one to the bottom, and revealing his own Kinnon, drawing it. He moves to his end step, and Alex activates Kinnon, this time putting Allosaurus Shepherd into play. Then he activates Thrasios, scrying one to the top, revealing Trinisphere. He draws it, and then Aaron continues to pass. Alex untaps and draws a card. He hard casts Nyx Bloom Ancient, then moves to combat. He swings Void Winnower at Aaron. Aaron takes 11, going to 28. In his post-combat main, Alex activates Kinnon and puts Lana War Elves into play. He activates Kinnon again, this time putting Terastodon into play. When it enters the battlefield, Alex targets all three of Elliot's lands, so Elliot loses those and he makes three elephants to replace them. Then he draws three off the Gitrog triggers. Alex casts Findhorn Elves, then follows it up with a Trinisphere. Jim's had enough and hard casts Force of Negation, countering the Trinisphere. Then Alex passes. Jim untaps and draws a card. He casts a Sol Ring. It enters tap due to Manglehorn. Then Jim moves to his end step. 
Alex activates Kinnon once, putting Wandering Archaic into play, activates Kinnon twice, and this time he whiffs. He activates Kinnon a third time, putting Kira Great Glass Spinner into play. He activates Kinnon a fourth time and puts Lawan Cephalid Empress into play. It enters the battlefield and returns all blue creatures to their owner's hand. Then he activates Kinnon one last time and puts Phantasmal Image into play as a copy of Nyx Blue Ancient, because he needed more mana. Then Jim continues to pass the turn. Elliot untaps, and in his upkeep, he has to sacrifice the Gitrog monster to its own ability because he's got no more lands left. He draws for turn, plays a Verdant Catacombs, and moves to his end step. Alex activates Kinnon to put Jin Gitaxia's Progress Tyrant into play. He activates Kinnon again, putting Hallbreaker Horror into play. He tallies up all of his mana and comes up with 337, allowing him to activate Thrasios 84 times. That's more than the number of cards he's got in his deck, so we shortcut it and allow him to put his entire library in his hand with all the lands into play tapped. Then Elliot continues to pass the turn. Aaron untaps, draws a card, and passes, discarding Kinnon to hand size. Alex untaps and draws a card. He casts Mana Crypt. He taps it for two colorless. He then casts Mox Opal, triggering Hallbreaker Horror to bounce the Mana Crypt back to his hand. He then repeats this 100,000 times to make more mana than he knows what to do with. On the last cast of Mox Opal, he uses the Hallbreaker Horror trigger to bounce Terastodon back to his hand. He recasts it, using the ETB trigger to turn one of Jim's, Elliot's, and Aaron's lands into elephants. Now that they've all got creatures, he's able to demonstrate a loop. Alex casts Reality Shift, targeting an elephant. This exiles it and manifests the top card of that player's library. He then casts Endurance, and when it enters, it triggers its own ability, targeting himself. He holds priority and casts Pongify, targeting the Endurance to send it to the graveyard, then resolves the ETB trigger to shuffle Endurance, Pongify, and Reality Shift back into his library. He activates Thrasios a few times to draw them all again, and repeats the process to eventually exile all the cards in everyone's library, then passes the turn so each of his opponents lose in their draw step. What a runaway. I actually don't remember the last time I saw both Void Winnerer and Nyx Bloom Ancient in a CEDH game. But it happened here. It's kinda wild when you have that much mana, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. But that's it for this week, we might have to go back to the drawing board and see what we can pull out to deal with Kinnon. We'll catch you next time. I want to give a huge shout out to all of our patron supporters, especially those on the screen right now. The support you give us helps us keep the lights on, and keeps us making cool content like this every week. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, thanks for checking us out, and we'll catch you next time.